Hi, Dr. Paul Hader here. You know, if we want to have peace in our mind and our body, uh, we have to have some changes that we have to do. You know, it's just like a man I was talking to yesterday he has high cholesterol and uh, he wants to get off of statin drugs. And I said, well, you're going to have to give up all that animal protein and all that, uh, you know, those animal products in general, the dairy and seafood, and he said, oh, not the, not the shrimp, no, uh, you know, but we have to make a little compromise there, <laughs> we can't ha have our cake and eat it too sometimes, <laughs> so we have to move in a direction which is going to make our, you know, body happy and our mind happy in the end uh, by changing our mind a little bit, you know? I think that's really important. A lot, a lot of times, you know, we, we get to a place where we, uh, we don't want to allow ourselves to, you know, give or take a little bit. And uh, we see that a lot nowadays, really. <laughs> I think it's really important that we learn to give and take. Because a lot of times, you know, oh, I have a terrible upset stomach. I shouldn't have ate all that, you know what I mean? And uh, at the same time, we want to have our stomach peaceful, but we, you know, didn't, didn't need to eat all that spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> So it's it's a give and take. That's that's uh, exactly the same thing, and we're always going through this, you know. And spirituality is exactly the same thing, and we have to allow ourselves to take the time to do things that we need to do. Uh, it's no different than you know. Uh, I want to be able to get my blood sugar down, but I keep eating sugar all the time and, and because I just really love chocolate. And at the same time, I hate feeling really bad. So we, you know, have to make uh, a choice which is going to make us feel the best. <laughs> I know people exactly in that same boat. There's no doubt about it. I've known actually hundreds. And <clears throat> so we have to make that decision. Uh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to change this? And, and stick with it also. And it's the same thing with, you know, if, if I want inner peace, do I do the meditation? You know, I mean, I can guarantee people if they do, you know, put in an hour in the morning like I do of meditation, an hour in the evening like I do of meditation. Uh, I don't know anybody that doesn't have great peace inside if that sticks with that protocol every day of doing the papasana or the you know tm or that is probably probably the most common two in the world of meditation and they will find uh, is tranquility and then the stress will start rolling off them like uh, water off the, the back of a duck you know it really does work there's absolutely no doubt about it i've been doing it for yeah, well, actually over 30 years now and it's amazing. But we have to trade off. You know, I don't want to give up my hour in the morning. <clears throat> I don't want to give up my hour in the evening, you know. Well, we can't have it both ways. <laughs> so we have to allow ourselves to <clears throat> figure out and make a little changes in order in our lives to accommodate these type of things. Uh, we say we want great peace but are we willing to make the change to have that great peace you know it's the same thing I had a, a man the other day who uh, emailed me and he said you know what I have people who are harassing me at work and uh, uh, the bosses won't do anything about it and it's been going on for years and it's getting to the point where uh, you know I just can't take it anymore and I said, you know what? Is something you can do is called make a change, you know? He said, I'm in 55, and I, I don't want to make a change. Yeah, and I said, well, you know, my dad was in his, let's say, I think he was 53 or 54, no, well, maybe a little later than that, maybe 55, in fact. And he was working for a big company, uh, and it was a big corporate farm, and he was working for them, and they were always kind of, 
and a little mean and nasty for to him and uh for 30 years in fact and then one day my dad couldn't take it anymore and he quit and he just out of the blue he said quit you know this is not worth it uh, he'd been putting up with this kind of mean and nasty relationship with them for a long, long time. And my dad really felt really bad because, you know, my dad was a really hard worker. And then another company uh, heard about my dad and they said, you come work for us. And he did. And those people loved my father. And they would do any bend over backwards for him because they knew he was a hard worker, and he would do anything to make the crop right. And he would give him people to help him, give him all the tractors he wanted, everything, you name it. They were going to make my dad feel at home there, and they were just lovely, kind people. And so, what happened in that transition, that change, became a blessing. You know what I mean? A great blessing. And it's a lot of times we. We need to look at the silver lining as going to come out of something which is uh, we think is going to be a negative thing. And in the end, it ends up being something really wonderful. But we have to make that transition. We have to make and be willing to, you know, lose something, you know, let go of our fears of losing this in order to uh, gain something wonderful. It's no different from the meditation thing. You know what I mean? I'm going to lose my hour of doing something in order to have peace. Uh, you know, with my dad, it was going to, I'm going to lose my, you know, a way of making money, uh, but I'm going to have peace in the, in the work situation. So it's really no different whatsoever. And we have these decisions all day long. And it's about, you know, what we do, what we choose. But are we listening to that still, small voice of God inside? You know, God, in every spiritual text, talks about that he lives in our heart. And we, I think we just are too busy in this day-in, day-out uh, craziness that we live in, especially in the Western world. Uh, you don't get that in a lot of other cultures, you know what I mean? You go to Greece, things are much more laid back. You go to Italy, things are much more laid back. Uh, and in other cultures around the world, a lot of people don't, you know, are not running around crazy like they, we are. And so they have more time to reflect, more time to contemplate, more time to do the meditation. That's part of their day. You know, if you go to, uh, you know, someplace like Malaysia or Nepal or, you know, you go to Nepal, prayer is part of the day. There is no doubt about that. Prayer and meditation are the actual fiber and of the fabric that makes up life. And I think that's uh, exceedingly, exceedingly important to weave that type of tapestry of our life that we want, really want. You know, because otherwise society takes over and it will <laughs> create havoc in our life. There's no, no doubt about it. Uh, look what society's got going now. Oh, well. Uh, so it, it's a really important that we allow ourselves to pick the threads and make up that tapestry. You know, you know, I want meditation in my life. Let's weave this into my life. Uh, I'm going to pull out this other thread that was about busyness all the time, you know. Okay. Well, let's see, I'm, I'm going to start eating right. You know, I'm going to weave that into the tapestry of my life. And I'm going to pull out this other thing. It was called thread of fast food and throw that away, you know. And I'm going to, you know, weave in the uh, uh, thread of allowing myself to have a little time to contemplate my life and then pull out this, you know, crazy stress that I have and throw that away. And oh, we do this over and over and over again until we get to those final moments of our life and we look back at this tapestry that we've created and we either like it or don't like it. You know what I mean? But if you have masterfully created each one of those threads in order to create this beautiful tapestry, it can be a, th a work of art. And instead of kicking and screaming on the way out, we go, oh, wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is amazing. It was great. Thank you, God, for the whole process. It was more than I could have ever expected. 
And I think that's uh, really, really important, you know. I just had a, a person email me this morning, in fact, and uh, this lady is a friend of an older lady who has a brain tumor. And uh, she was asking for the triangle of John of God, which I, I sent her and, you know, the information about how to use it. And it said that the older lady with a brain tumor had a dream of uh, John of God actually uh, doing surgery of some kind upon her and doing the healing. And I thought that was really powerful, you know, because they do come into our dreams and do healing. And uh, do we weave the thread of belief into our life? That's a very big one. Do we weave the thread of belief and faith into our life? You know, this could be the major uh, thread that starts the rest of the tapestry. If do we weave the thread of belief and faith into our life? You know, nobody can weave that thread into our life for us. We have to weave that thread into ourselves, own tapestry ourselves. And I think that's uh, an individual choice. And you see a lot of people who would refuse. You see a lot of people who just haven't had the right experience yet. Uh, you see a lot of people who are searching and looking for that thread to be able to, you know, thread it into their tapestry and have it as their main uh, strength which from which the rest of the tapestry is actually hanging from. And I tell you, that thread is stronger than steel. It can actually make our life wonderful. It allows ourselves allows us to get through things that we wouldn't be able to get through otherwise. You know, th take for Hurricane Maria here uh, you know, on the island. Uh, it was devastating. You know, you, you wake up in the morning after the, the, the two days of it passing and you go outside and it looks like a bomb game went off. I mean, really, it looks like a bomb. There's no leaves, everything's stark, there's no green, no, there's no, nothing, trees down, buildings destroyed. It was like, wow. And it would be overwhelming for somebody uh, yeah, in a lot of normal situations. And a lot, some people did take their own lives. But those people who had great faith, those people who had a strong sense of community, those people who had a strong sense of love, a strong sense of we're going to get through this. And I know I can make a difference in the lives of other people. And make a change to make a difference and uh, allow ourselves to know that, you know, in a few months' time, all of this is going to change. And look, it's been four months, and the, the, the island has really uh, recovered in a, in a ma major way as far as nature is concerned. Well, we're still struggling as far as electricity and that type of thing goes, but, you know, we have survived, and we did overcome. And that major thread of belief and faith was there. And everybody and anybody can have that if they just allow themselves to open, open their mind, open their heart to these experiences. Now, I remember one particular experience back in the uh, 50s. Um, it was told to me about a, uh, a man, I actually know the person, and uh, they were in California, and they were going on a cross-country vacation, you know. I mean, this is the first vacation they've taken in a long time. They had two kids. They're in the back seat. They're driving along. Uh, the man was preoccupied with something, he, you know, actually a friend. And he had stuff on his mind, and he was just, like, caught up, and he couldn't really understand why he had all this stuff going on. It was almost like anxiety almost. And he was getting mad at the kids in the back and kind of snapping at his wife a little bit. And so they pulled into a, you know, a diner and they were made their way all the way to uh, uh, Pennsylvania, I thought, I think it was. And uh, they pulled in and he said, no, I'm not hungry, honey. Uh, you go take the kids. I'm going to wait out here. I need to get some air. 
And so he's waiting there, and there's two phone booths there. And it's very interesting. All of a sudden, one of the phones started ringing in a phone booth, you know. And uh, he walks over, and he said, no, no, that's not for me. And it keeps ringing, and he keeps ringing, and then he finally picks it up, you know. And he picks it up, and the operator says, is this Ken? And he said, yeah. And, uh, and he said, we have a call for you. He said, what? It's just the phone booth. And he said, yeah. Uh, so the lady on the other side started talking to him, and uh, she was about to kill herself. And, but she had a number that she, she thought she remembered that uh, this man had given to her. He was kind of a neighbor, uh, a neighbor in the... Uh, you know, in the community there that they lived in, and she always talked to him. He was walking the dogs and that type of thing, and he was very friendly. But and she had lost her job. She was getting a divorce, and she thought that her life was over. And then, you know, this number came to her, and she had a gun, and she was going to do herself in. And she had this phone number that came to her, and she decided to call this number. And lo and behold, you know, out of nowhere, this phone rings in a phone booth. What are the odds of that happening in the middle of Pennsylvania somewhere? You know, that has to be a miracle, miracle. So when you know these type of things that happen, you know, that these are the things that pull the thread of great belief and, and faith into our lives. And after that, that man was never the same. And, and he became very happy at the, after that for the rest of the trip. All those things he was worried about just kind of disappeared. He didn't think about them anymore. So uh, very interesting. And uh, I think it's really important that we allow ourselves to find that great faith and a great belief and faith in our life to hang our tapestry of life from and make that those trade-offs that we need to make in order to have what we want to have, that great peace inside. And we can do it. There's absolutely no doubt about it. If you are, like what I've been talking about, please subscribe. If you want to get a hold of me, all my contact information is down below. Click on Show More. Uh, my phone number, email, and everything is there. Skype. Uh, would love to hear from you. All my consults are free, whether it be herbal or whether they be spiritual. And uh, I'm always here for you. Remember, sometimes I'm sleeping when you're awake, so <laughs> I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm also on Facebook under Dr. Paul Hader. And uh, if you come and uh, join my page and like my page, that would be great. Also, uh, if you care to make a, a donation, the link is there uh, that you can make a donation. My wife and I live on Social Security, and we greatly appreciate that. So anytime uh, I can help you in any way, shape, or form, you let me know. I love you.